But today we're going to look at Poisson distribution. And just a couple things about Poisson. Let's say I'm flipping a coin 10 times. What are the chances of getting four heads? Well, you're going to use binomial, right? Because you can have 10, choose four, probability is one half, and so on. But what if I asked you, what are the chances? Uh, what are the what are the chances of of getting two heads? But you just keep going. It can be 50. It can be 100. It could be a thousand. Well, now you're talking a different kind of probability. And when we look at things having an infinite number of n going to infinity, and when we have ratios instead of events. We're using something called Poisson. And Poisson has an E in it, so it's got some special properties. Uh, given 20% accuracy of hitting a target, what are the chances of hitting it twice? Okay, is it is putting a ceiling on it? It's not saying two times, five times, ten times. It's saying hitting it twice. So, um, you know, we're going to take a look at stuff like that in this section. Now, you're going to see a lot of the same things that we emphasized before with the calculator, Poisson, mu, comma, x. Now, look at this, what you're putting into the calculator. Mu, by the way, is your expected value, which is simply going to be the lambda, which is your ratio of things happening, times time. We're looking at time here more than we're looking at uh, number of times. So... Since we put in our calculator mu comma x, does, what don't you see in here that you saw before? I don't see any n. There's no n. No n in this one. The formula is pretty weird, though. Uh, the probability of x is going to be e to the negative mu, which we'll look at lambda times t, times mu to the x over x factorial. And we're not going to derive that here, but we do that in further. So lambda is the rate per time. We use that to find mu. Mu is kind of our goal, is finding mu. And we can have x be one times, two times. We can have a million times if we want. Well, let's see an example that would make sense. Cars pass by a certain point at a rate of 0.4 per hour. So in a 10-hour period, how many cars did they see? Four, yeah. So 0.4 per hour is just taking 0.4 divided by 10. All right, that's lambda, is 0.4 uh, cars per hour. Would you write that down? Lambda, I guess I have it right here too. If we're looking at this for two hours, how many cars would you expect to see? 0.4 times 2, not quite 1, it'll be 0.8 cars. That's how many you would expect to see. So find the probability that no cars, so x in this case, is going to be equal to 0. Well, let's see if we can figure it out. Well, let's use the formula. e to the minus mu, which is 0.8, times mu, which is 0.8, to the 0, because there are 0 cars, over 0 factorial. And that's just going to be e to the negative 0.8, because all these are 1, aren't they? And you could calculate that. That's the probability. Could you find the probability of seeing 100 cars? Yeah, it's going to be small. It's not going to be likely. We can use our calculator here, 0.8 comma 0, and that'll get you that event as well. All right, number 14. Uh, on average, it's found that 8 out of 10 electric companies produced from a large batch has at least one defective component. Find the probability that there will be at least two defective components from a randomly selected batch. So we need to find lambda first. So it says... The probability that x is greater than or equal to 1, at least 1, is 8 tenths. Okay, So we can find the probability of 0, probability of 0, 
If we go 1 minus probability of 0 is 8 tenths, what's the probability of none of them having it? 2 tenths, yeah. 1 minus 8 tenths equals probability of 0, okay? So now, that's what x equals 0. Now what you can do, it says find the probability that there will be at least 2. Well, we need to find lambda first. We need to find lambda. And I think I found, yeah, lambda. So we, we have the probability of 0. We did that first is 0.2. 0.2 is equal to all this. When x is 0, you're just going to get e to the negative mu is equal to 0.2. And so 0.2 equals 0.2 equals e to the negative mu. Take log base e of 0.2 and get negative mu. And I'm going to need your help on this one. Mu is equal to what? Opposite of the natural log of 0.2. Can you give me four decimals for that? Nine. Good. So there's your mu. A little bit of work finding that mu. I don't remember why I wanted to find lambda here. I'm going to keep moving ahead here. Okay. So now, what's the probability that x is greater than or equal to 2? What you're going to do is you can take 1 minus probability of 0, probability of 1, and then you, you could figure that out. We'll do this with a calculator tomorrow. Your assignment is to do all of these three and then the rest of these, 1, 2, 4, and 8. We'll finish those off. More Poisson tomorrow.